Ooh. Let's talk about one of the most asked questions on my channel. Do data analysts need to learn coding? You want the short answer? No, you don't have to. That's it. The video is done. You can go. Of course, as with everything in data analysis, there is no short answer. The correct answer always is it depends. So let's analyze the question of do data analysts need to code? Before we get into the specifics, let me tell you a little bit about my background. That way you will view these answers or these opinions in that perspective. So I worked as a business and data analyst for a good part of 15 years now. And I have come from a heavy computer science background. So I did my bachelor's in computer science engineering and before that I did a diploma in computer engineering as well. And I have been writing code one way or another for almost uh, 26 years now. So yeah, a majority of my life. As a data analyst, you are expected to have many technical skills. And coding is one of those skills. So it's not like make or break to have coding skills. You can be a highly successful, well-regarded and extremely good money-making data analyst without even writing a single line of code. And a good part of my data analysis career has been without writing any code. In fact, for the last couple of data analysis projects I did, I didn't even write a single line of code. Even though there was opportunities to write, I always avoided them. So even people who, who, who don't program, when you ask them, do you consider Excel to be a programming language, they'll simply say no. And that is in a way true, but also false. Because essentially in coding or programming, what you're doing is you are talking to computer, you're telling computer what you want and how you want, and then the computer will give you the output. As long as you are talking to the computer, you are conveying your thoughts and ideas and implementation to the computer, the medium can all be considered as programming language. So if you are building a nice little Excel spreadsheet to calculate the inventory cost, what you have done is you have built a program. Whether you accept or not, you have built a program. So I consider Excel, Excel skills or DAX skills or Power Query skills, all of these are like little programs that you're building, even though you don't think of them as programming. So if you are thinking, oh, I know all of these, do I need to learn more? Then you probably don't have to learn anything more because you are already programming. You just have to clear your mind and start viewing these things as programs and then that makes you more confident and comfortable when it comes to picking up newer programming skills. If you are thinking, hmm, all of this is good Chandu, but I'm not really sure if programming is for me, and you're thinking, can everybody code? Then here is my answer. Yes, you can also code. Everyone can code. This is because as I said, programming is just talking to computers. So anybody can talk, like anyone can speak, assuming they don't have any impairments or disabilities. Like the same way, anyone who is thinking can convey those thoughts to the computer. It's just that computers are so much more harder and the grammar and the language and the semantics are different than maybe English or Tamil or Hindi or Telugu, whatever language you speak. But all of us can think of something and then convey that thought. How do I now learn this coding or programming skills? I've got some simple suggestions for you. The number one suggestion, and this is really the most important one, is when it comes to learning programming or coding skills, it is really important to give it time. I'm going to tell you my personal experience. I started developing computer programming or learning how to code all the way back in 1996 and up until 2003 seven years 
I haven't really built any meaningful sized programs or any valuable piece of code. So it took me a good seven years to kind of become extremely comfortable with computers and think in the programming way. So don't don't feel rushed or don't feel pressurized or don't think that you know if I watch a one hour YouTube video or if I do a 10 day course or if I go to a class on the weekend I'll become a programmer. That is not gonna happen for a majority of us. A majority of us will take a significant amount of time to learn the coding skills. So don't beat yourself up, don't feel bad if you are not learning Python in the weekend. Give it a year, give it two years. Life is pretty long, so dedicate some time, effort and deliberate practice to become good in something. Okay, so that's the really important thing because I see that many people especially young data analysts or young people who are getting into this profession always coming to me and telling hey Chandu we are trying to learn this for the last three months and I'm at my wits end I don't understand anything should I give up and do something else and that's that's really the problem because you're not giving it time imagine you are, you are very fluent in in one of the languages like for me my mother my mother tongue is Telugu so up until I was 16 or 17 years old, I didn't know how to speak even one sentence in English. All my education, schooling, everything was done in Telugu language. And when I got into my college, obviously at that level, all the instruction is in English. So now I suddenly have to learn how to not only read and write English at a high school level, but also, you know, communicate the exam answers or everything needs to be in English. And it would take, it took me almost seven, eight years, like pretty much the same time as it took me <laughs> to write computer programs to become reasonably fluent in English. And then even today, I kind of sometimes struggle to find the right word or right combinations or even the right grammar for that matter. So learning programming is like that. You are really learning a different way of thinking in your mind. Uh, and a different way of communicating. So if you don't give it time and you rush it, you are not going to get any good results. So that's the key thing. The second thing, and this is also really important, and this is something that I personally didn't do when I started learning, but nowadays I do it more often, is do things that you enjoy when it comes to coding. Let's say you enjoy cooking. Maybe you can write a program that can analyze recipes and, you know, find common ingredients among 100 different recipes. Whatever is your interest, if you enjoy sports, maybe you can go and download all the sports statistics from one of the websites. Or if you enjoy movies, you could go to IMDB or one of those websites, analyze the data that is there. So whatever is your hobby or whatever is your passion, choose programming concepts or programming topics in that world that way it becomes much more approachable and you will be less intimidated by the whole concept the th the third technique when it comes to learning programming and this is more generic also but i find that for programming this is more relevant is find a method that works for you so you can learn how to code or how to program using books, videos, in-person classes, online classes, project-based or different combinations. Depending on how you learn, pick a method that works best for you and go for it. I'm not saying, you know, join this video course, you will become a programmer or buy this book, you will become a programmer. Instead, choose what works best for you. For example, personally for me, I find that when I'm learning a new language, like recently I have been learning how to code in Python. The first thing that I did is I downloaded and installed Python and I went to some YouTube tutorials to get the concepts. Once I understood the concepts, then I went to my library, took a book and I read like half of the book. I didn't finish the book, but I read half of it to get more familiar with the language system. Once these two are done, then I did what I do really best when it comes to learning is I started thinking what should what would I do if I have to teach Python to somebody else so I, I started imagining that you know I would be making a Python video on my YouTube channel a long way if I have to cover these concepts or if I have to explain these things 
how would I do that? So then I learned those things. So th this is really how I learn personally. You might be having a different way of learning. Whatever it is that works for you, choose that. Don't be forced or don't think, oh, my friend is using this Udemy course or my my colleagues are going for this in-person class. I should do it like that. No, pick a method that works best for you and learn like that. And the fourth tip when it comes to learning programming is, it kind of ties back to our very first pick. Pick a single language first and learn it properly. Okay, programming in a way is you're learning how to talk to computers. So when you are learning how to talk as a kid, imagine if you have got a mixed language family going on. So your mom is speaking Hindi, your dad is speaking Tamil and your brother is speaking Telugu and someone else is speaking English to you as a baby all the time. You wouldn't really know which language to pick up. But if all of them are speaking the same language and you're there as a small baby, you would immediately pick up the language and learn. And once you become fluent in that language, you can learn other languages very easily. So same idea applies for programming. Whatever language you pick, you could pick VBA, you could pick Python, you could pick something else. Just pick one and go and learn that until you become comfortable in the whole paradigm of programming. Once you are there, then you can go and add new languages. Don't just bunny hop between different programming languages every weekend. Instead, stick to one for a good long while, pick up all the necessary concepts and then go for more. You might be thinking, hmm, I want to learn more. What language should I learn? Here is a video that I did a while ago that compares Visual Basic VBA with Python. Do check that one out and it will kind of give you an overview of both languages and compares them for a data analyst professional. And YouTube thinks you will enjoy this particular video. So watch one of these two. And if you are new here, consider subscribing to the channel for more videos like this where I talk about data, Excel, Power BI, programming and all of those things. Thank you so much. I'll catch you somewhere else. Bye-bye.